Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number one. What would you say to a few days off? Super. What does the woman mean? Number two. This food sure is spicy. No kidding. What does the woman mean? Number three. Wasn't that a great movie? I've seen better. What does the man mean? Number four. That's a fantastic stereo system. It must have been expensive. I bought it on sale. What does the man imply about his stereo? Number five. You look different. Did you change your hair? Yes. I had it cut last week. What does the woman mean? Number six. Could you please bring me a bowl of soup and a salad? Right away. What does the man mean? Number seven. Have you come up with a guest speaker for the banquet? Not so far, but I'm working on it. What does the woman mean? Number eight. Someone's here to see you. What? What does the woman want to know? Number nine. Can you tell me how to use this pay telephone? The instructions are written on the poster right next to it. What will the man probably do next? Number ten. How did you do at getting contributions for the scholarship? Well, we're still short two hundred dollars. What does the man mean? Number eleven. Are you going to be able to come with us to the game? I'm afraid not. I have to work late. What does the man mean? Number 12. Sam, are you the one who picked up the picnic table for us? No, I got Tony to do it. What does Sam say about the table? Number 13. When are you going to move into the dorm, Randy? I'm not sure. I'd like to be able to wait until after summer vacation.
What does Randy mean? Number 14. Thanks for fixing that broken chair. The glue isn't dry yet. The legs are still unstable. What does the man say about the chair? Number 15. This assignment is too much. I'll never get it done. No need to panic. Just take it one step at a time. What does the woman think the man should do? Number 16. Would you rather stay home tonight? Oh, let's go ahead and go out. I'll get my second wind. What does the woman want to do? Number 17. I can't figure out how to turn off the coffee machine. Did you check the instructions? They're printed on the back. What does the woman think the man should do? Number 18. I just heard that starting tomorrow, students will no longer be allowed to use the gym for free. If I were you, I'd speak to the athletic department about that. That kind of policy doesn't really seem fair. What does the man suggest the woman do? Number 19. Those new drapes are gorgeous. Thanks. They're practical, too. My heating bill has gone way down since I put them in. What does the man mean? Number 20. John sure seems happy with his new bicycle. He really got a good deal on it at the bike sale. What does the man mean? Number 21. We're going to get something to eat now. Aren't you coming? I just finished a sandwich. What does the man imply? Number 22. Isn't Professor Larson the only faculty member in the English department who has written a book? Far from it. There are a number of others who've done a lot of publishing. What does the woman mean? Number 23. We really ought to find a place to store all of these books. Maybe we should get some bookcases. What problem do the speakers have? Number 24. I guess I'm going to have to take George to the airport. Why don't you get someone else to do it? What does the woman suggest the man do? Number 25. I hear you're going to take the six-week French immersion class this summer. Did you get a grant to help pay for it? Are you kidding? I have to pay for all of my own tuition, not to mention my room and board. What does the man say about the immersion class? Number 26. 
Number 26. I don't like the looks of those clouds. I wouldn't worry about them. If it starts to rain, we'll just move our picnic indoors. What does the woman mean? Number 27. It's going to take me several days to revise this research paper. Unfortunately, it's due tomorrow. What does the man mean? Number 28. Listen to this. The Student Association is going to nominate you for class president. Oh, no. Are you kidding? What does the man mean? Number 29. Paul didn't show up at the meeting today. I know. What I want to know is if he finished that report he promised. What does the woman mean? Number 30. We're ready to leave for the theater now. Aren't you coming? I'll catch up. I'm waiting for Jane. What does the man imply? This is the end of Part A. Go on to Part B. Part B. Directions. In this part, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, Find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to the following conversation. Hi, Fred. I didn't see you in Professor Densmore's class this morning. Well, I spent half the night in the computer lab finishing a psychology paper that's due today. I finally did get to sleep around 3 this morning, but I didn't hear my alarm when it went off at 6.30. Still always putting things off until the last minute, huh? Wasn't that paper assigned a couple of months ago? Well, yes, but you know how easily time can get away from you. Right. Well, anyway, you missed a good lecture this morning. I think you would have found it especially interesting. Oh, yeah? Why? As I remember, you're interested in volcanoes. Well, today Professor Densmore's lecture was all about Mount St. Helens in Washington State. It really is a shame that I missed that. Oh, well, at least I got my psychology paper finished. Yeah. By the way, what did you write about? The personality traits of people who are prone to procrastination. You know, that fine art of postponing things you have to do. Oh, so I guess you understand yourself a bit better now that you've finished this paper, right? <laughs> well, I hadn't thought of it that way. But, you know, I guess you might be right. Number 31. Who is the woman in this conversation? Number 32. Why didn't Fred go to his morning class? Number 33. What was Fred doing last night? Number 34. 
What does the woman probably think about Fred? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a conversation about sports. Sam, where are you going with all that climbing gear? To the mountains? That's what most people think. But actually, I'm involved in an up-and-coming new sport, tree climbing. Really? I know that kids climb trees and people climb trees as part of their jobs, but a new sport? Tell me more about it. Well... There is now an organization, Tree Climbers International, which was founded in 1984 by Peter Jenkins. He also has a school where he trains people to climb. But why trees? Well, Jenkins is a tree surgeon and a former rock climber. He just combined his two loves into a sport. He says tree climbing is safer than mountain climbing and, well, a lot more convenient. So what do you use for equipment? Ropes to hoist yourself into the tree, and a tree surgeon's saddle to sit in when you're in the treetop. And how do you get into the tree? I suppose that you choose really tall trees, don't you? A 75-foot tree is a good climb, and to do that, you also have to be able to use a throw ball. A throw ball is a weight used to initially loop the rope over the branches. So what kind of trees are you climbing now? Well, trees are classified by difficulty from 1 to 6. I'm on class four trees, but if a tree leans or if you climb in the rain, the difficulty for that tree can go up. I see here in your brochure that Jenkins himself climbed the fifth largest tree in the world, a 357-foot California redwood, and then spent the night in a hammock suspended in the top boughs. Now that sounds like fun. Number 35. What is the main topic of the conversation? Number 36. Why did Peter Jenkins begin the sport of tree climbing? Number 37. Why did the woman think Sam was going mountain climbing? Number 38. What impressed the woman most about Peter Jenkins' latest climb? This is the end of Part B. Go on to Part C. Part C. Direction. In this part of the test, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to a social studies teacher tell her class about what they will be doing in the coming year. Welcome to Introductory Social Studies 101. My name is Professor Barrett. Let me tell you a little about myself and then we'll go over the course syllabus together. After that, I'd like you each to introduce yourselves and talk a bit about what you hope to get out of this class. I have been teaching in the Social Studies Department here at Johnsville College for 13 years. This is my first year of teaching the introductory course, though, which is one of the reasons I want to know about your expectations. I did my undergraduate work at Burke College and got my advanced degrees in modern American history right here at Johnsville. I worked for several years at the Social Science Research Center in Washington, D.C., but I wasn't able to teach there and I decided that my first love is teaching. So I came back to Johnsville. 
Normally, I teach a modern American history course and a senior seminar. This year, Dr. Wilkins is teaching the senior seminar, and I have taken over this introductory course for him. I welcome the change and look forward to some lively discussion in this class. One more thing before I distribute copies of the syllabus. As most of you know, starting this year, we are introducing a community service requirement to the social studies curriculum. In order to get credit for this class, you will be expected to complete 10 hours of community service with one or more service organizations of your choice. If you have questions about whether a particular organization qualifies, please see me individually. Now, here is the syllabus. You'll see that this is the first half of a two-year survey course on world civilizations. Let's look at the details of the syllabus so that you will get a sense of the pace and sequence of the subjects we will cover. When I'm finished, I'm sure you'll have lots of questions. Number 39. What was one of the reasons that Professor Barrett said she wanted the students to talk about their expectations? Number 40. Why did Professor Barrett decide to leave the Social Science Research Center and return to Johnsville? Number 41. What will Dr. Wilkins be doing for the coming year? Number 42. What new requirement has been added to the social studies curriculum? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to a radio talk about robins. The American robin, a member of the thrush family of birds, can be found throughout most of North America. It is commonly seen on neighborhood lawns, where it runs to and fro looking for juicy worms and tasty insects. In the fall, many robins migrate from the north to spend the winter in the warmer climate of southern states. However, not all robins migrate that far or that direction. Some birds migrate east or west rather than from north to south. In the spring, Males arrive back in the north before the females to select nesting territories. Once the females arrive and a male has successfully acquired a mate, construction of the nest begins. Robin's nests are neatly molded cavities of mud and sticks which are lined with soft grass and down from the breast of the female. Robin's nests can be found in a variety of locations, including trees, window ledges, and even on the tops of outdoor lamps. The female lays between four and six bluish-green eggs. Once laid, the eggs need to incubate for 12 to 15 days before they hatch. While the female does most of the incubating, sitting on the eggs day and night to keep them warm, the male does relieve her from time to time so that she can eat. It is common for a pair of robins to produce two sets of eggs in one summer session. Number 43. What does the robin eat? Number 44. Why do many robins fly south in the winter? Number 45. Why does the male robin arrive back in the north before the female does? Number 46. Why does the male robin relieve the female during incubation?
questions 47 through 50. Listen to a talk given to a group of new international students. Hi, welcome to State College. My name is Suzanne Irish, and I'm a senior here at the college, studying business and administration. I'm originally from New York, but I've grown to love Vermont very much, so I consider it my home, and I hope that you will, too. I work for the international student advisor, Mrs. Stoke, whom you have just had the pleasure of meeting. If you have a problem and need assistance, you can always call or find me. I'm in Mrs. Stokes' office from about 3 to 6 p.m., or you can call me at home. My home number is listed in the folder I've just passed out. Let's look together at that folder now. In the left side pocket, you will find information about the college, including important schedules and phone numbers. Please note the hours that the cafeteria is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Also, notice that the bookstore opens at 8.30 a.m. and that it closes at 4.30 p.m. sharp. A piece of advice, the hours never change, so don't plan on going to the bookstore after 4.30. Also, included in this side of your folder are descriptions and schedules for the classes you'll be taking. Another piece of advice, try to be on time to class. You might want to set your watch ahead by 10 minutes if you're the type of person that always runs late. On the right-hand side of the folder, I have placed tourist pamphlets on Vermont for you to read or save for your parents when they come to visit you. I especially recommend the Blue Map of Vermont and the Seasonal Guide because they both give information on a wide range of restaurants, museums, and attractions in Vermont. If you would like to discuss any of the attractions with me, I'm always available. Oh, we've run out of time. We should get ready to go on our campus tour. Number 47. Who is Suzanne Irish? Number 48. What is the purpose of Suzanne's talk? Number 49. What two pieces of advice does Suzanne give the students? Number 50. What is going to happen now?